Hello there, Armchair Warriors. This is Tom here playing Hearts of Iron 3 Black Ice Modification version 12.0. Yes, it just got released. As I'm doing this video, I just noticed it got released. It got released a little bit earlier, actually. But anyway, it got released earlier today. A lot of changes. I'm not going to go through the whole entire spiel on what uh, what all transpired with it, um, but a lot of it uh, dealt with the uh, the map, the terrain, uh, how that looks. Um, there are some uh, changes to training, how uh, units uh, gain, maintain experience. Also, some changes to the various tabs, production tabs, and things of that kind of nature. We are going to start off a new Japanese campaign. There's been some changes to uh, to Japan. Um, here, you, for example, uh, one of the notes indicated that uh, it doesn't actually start in the queue. There'll be an event that'll bring it uh, to the forefront eventually, uh, based on you know what we choose, and. Um, there's some additional Japanese leaders and a few other things that get uh, get changed in here. Uh, but yeah, we're going to start off with the Japanese campaign. I've been actually, for the past couple months, I've been kind of tooling around with uh, tweaking my Japanese uh, play, the start, start of the play, basically, to try and kind of rework the way that the first few years go for me. Typically, you know, I'll spend the first uh, three years, three and a half years embroiled in war with uh, with China, um, and then just kind of kind of lapse into a uh, a false war, as it were, with Tibetans in Jiang while we're waiting for the actual festivities in the rest of the Pacific uh, against America, the Philippines against uh, Britain, UK, you know, Australia here, etc. Kind of all kick off. So we're we're going to try things a little bit differently here, and I want to see how the new uh, patch um, uh, here will be, or new version, I should say, will be working for all that. One thing I'm noticing right away, this is like really snappy. Um, I don't know. Well, I feel that this doesn't move around quite as rapidly as before, but or it's moving around more rapidly than before, I should say. But that could just be part of excitement of getting into a new a new version of Black Ice here. The mod team is great. There's at least at least three, four of them that are in, they're heavily involved in the, the modification process. And they're actually looking for a, a graphics designer to kind of help out in the next big version coming, uh, version 13. I'm sure they'll have some tweaks coming, probably some, uh, you know, uh, version 12.x patches as well, fixing some things, but we're starting off here to figure out kind of what has changed, how much for the better, <laughs> and play through a Japanese campaign till the better end. Already, and I don't know, I, I know I said I'm, I'm the past few months I kind of played around with the uh, 11.3.5, to just kind of tweak my starting uh, progress in Japan, but I don't recall the cities looking like the urban areas, I should say, looking like this. This is looking, uh, oh wow, there are some differences here as well, too. Um, this, this looks far sharper. It looks like the contrast got turned up a little bit or something. It just it looks far better, easier to read and look at. Uh, speaking of which, oh nice. Um, let's click on Tokyo real quick here. Oh yeah, this is this this whole entire window looks far more impressive than before. It now it pops. The best way I can describe it. Before, I wish I could like present a before and after. Um, it seemed rather mute. The color seemed rather muted, and well, these all kind of look the same. Um, though I don't remember. I don't remember if that was like that or not. I don't actually. I don't remember if these were even on here. Had to have been though. 
Uh, but this looks different. There, yeah, it feels like there's some differences here. Where this got changed, um, the overall UI, the, the GUI, graphics user, user interface here. Um, so the covert missions kind of stay the same. By the way, you can, uh, normally your covert missions, you click on any province, there's a few things you can do. But for your host country, the country that you're playing, if you click on your capital, which is the case for Japan, it's Tokyo, and you click on covert missions, there are several options that you'll see that you can do for your country. Um, so that's cool. And I'm glad they kept that in there. Uh, what is allied objectives? Oh, okay. That's different. I, yeah, I think the allied objective, that used to be else. I think it used to be right here or something. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to not gonna outright theorize any further here. Um, yeah, I'm liking the way that's looking. Uh, this window looks pretty much the same. Yeah, no big changes there, realistically speaking. I can't. I, I feel that the uh, s that the map certainly has changed a bit here. Um, so here's a new a new addition to the uh, to the overall map uh, terrain. We have mountain forests. Um, so now we have combinations of hills and mountains uh, as tertiary or or primary terrain. I guess I don't know combined with secondary terrain. So you're going to have uh, mountain forests, uh, mountain woods, um, hill woods. Um, let's go to jungle. Do we have anything like that here? Hills, wood. Maybe here, mountain forest, mountain forests. Maybe through here. Uh, Got to be down here. Mount woods. Ma here we go. Mountain jungle. So yeah, you've got you've got your primary terrain and you've got secondary terrain as well now cap uh, capably in, in there so your hills and mountains can have combinations uh, we still have straight hills <coughs> and straight mountains too and i presume yeah straight mountains but now you can also have mountain jungle so it, a little more realistic aspect to the <sighs> to the terrain as it was back then and still now <laughs> effectively um, to make you know to make your experience in World War II far more realistic um, we're going to tool around a little bit further here so I don't see anything different there per se Tooltips are all kind of, yeah, still the same in that regard. All this looks the same. There's no real big changes. Uh, yes, huge, well, I say huge change, relatively so. The, each of the panels, the tabs up here, sharper, far better to look at, uh, much more impressive. I definitely like this here. Uh, we'll start off with automate trade and let uh, the AI kind of take care. I'm not big in, in manually handling my trade. We get the AI to do the trade for me, and you know I'll step in every now and then as needed to kick some things to the curb. Um, resources trading start. Let's go ahead and select that here so we can get that kind of going. Black ice 1936 start. <clears throat> That will kind of get that choices going through here. Uh, we are going to do a hard. Um, still have the same levels of uh, difficulty here from definitely not grow fast, which, yeah, you, <laughs> I would say if you're a first time, well, definitely if you're a first time Hearts of Iron 3 player and you're like, oh, I want to also get Black Ice. I don't know why you would want to do that, but nonetheless, if you're like, yeah, I'm getting Heart, Hearts of Iron 3, and I'm going to install Black Ice, definitely not grow fast. Get used to the game first. Um, if you are if you played some Hearts of Iron 3 or even Hearts of Iron 4, you could probably jump right away into very easy or even easy. Normal starts the more difficult aspect. Uh, normal for Hearts of Iron 3. 
is actually easy or very easy here in Black Ice. I'm going to go ahead and jump into hard to, of course, make things a little bit more difficult for me here. But uh, we got very hard and grow fast as well, but far more difficulty, uh, far more difficult settings there too. Um, well, that's interesting. I've never played multiplayer myself. Just I don't, I don't have the friends <laughs> that, would, that would be interested in playing this game, quite honestly. And with the, those that do play multiplayer, I, they tend to be over and you know, Europe for the most part, or other places of the world, uh, just the time time differential would not work for me. Not to mention, for the most part, my play here in Hearts of Iron 3 tends to be when I've got the time, which, you know, that's that could be all of a sudden or, you know, kind of random. But anyway, we're picking hard. Chinese. Uh, we'll pick hard Chinese. Um, I could probably do very hard, I feel... Uh, definitely don't want to grow fast, but I also I don't want to be stuck in playing uh, uh, fighting against China forever and a day. Um, I'm fine with still attacking in China up until we're going to war against America, but I want to be able to have my troops released for for combat operations throughout the rest of Asia. So I think we'll just stick with a hard China here. Yeah. Actually, you know what? The difference here... Well, yeah, the National Manpower modifier does go up by 30 per 35 percent there. Ooh, yeah. A lot of, lot of differences. Um, greater officer recruitment by 50 percent. Kind of need that for the Manpower modifier as well. I see efficiency goes up by 2%, 2.5%. I see itself goes up by 2.5%. Uh, let's give it a whirl with very hard China. Uh, we're going to do very hard Italy. We're going to do very hard Germany. Um, I'm going to mm, kind of want to stick with just hard allies, I feel. Um, Uh, we'll do very hard allies, do very hard Soviets. Allied miners, we're going to go on to uh, normal. Uh, Axis miners, we're going to go on normal. And the unaffiliated miners, we're going to go on easy. I tend to do that just to make things kind of realistic in a way. So that way, like when Germany goes against Poland, uh, while, well, yes, Poland does join the allies when war is declared, um, that the first initial three and a half years, uh, 36, 37, 38 and a half, or 39, Poland is on that easy level, which I feel makes it a little bit more realistic, allows Germany the opportunity to uh, take out Poland in a realistic time frame, same as Norway and Denmark and, and all the others. Um, introduction and help. We'll go say show all. These haven't changed, but you know what? There's this like um, let's close this out real quick here. Yeah, there's like a kind of a a relief around it. I don't know. Maybe that's not quite this. Yeah, there might not be any changes. But yeah, there, there's definitely no change here. Uh, but that little tooltip certainly helps in regards for new players. Again, very easy or easy. I'd, I would recommend if this is your first time doing Black Ice. This um, help, uh, what's the heck is it called here? Well, I guess it goes away after you say, okay. It, it's a tooltip help that, that uh, comes up initially at game start. And you can set it to um, go away for a year. Um, I think when it first was released, there was an option where you could say disable entirely. But uh, fortunately, they, that's that's no longer the case. You can tell it to go away for a year and then come back. And you can always revisit um, some aspects of this, of these uh, helps through the utility window that's also available, which I got to check as well, kind of see how that is. Uh, Airdroppable units. Doesn't look like anything has changed there. I really need to kind of have a. Uh, oh, here we go. The informative events. 
Um, I really need to <laughs> keep track of this because as Japan, I'm going to be having some paradroppable units, uh, airdroppable units here. Headquarters, paratroopers, commandos, yes. Airborne, uh, engineers, and mixed support. Air landing infantry, all that makes sense. Elite light infantry battalion. There, there is... Let's see if I can find such an example of uh, over here. I know there is. Oh, here we are. Um, dun, 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 dun. Okay, I need to move all this away for a brief moment here. These are specialized light infantry. They're not the elite light infantry battalion, but I think there's a couple of events that'll pop up for Japan, at least they have in past playthroughs. Um, I think Germany as well even gets these, maybe everybody does for that matter, where you can purchase uh, mercenaries. And you have a choice of, I think it's either the elite light infantry battalion and um, something larger. And inevitably, sometimes I go for the something larger, cost more. But I, my thinking was, my thinking was, oh, I could, you know, it's a larger unit. I could then put it in and airdrop them. I gotta remember, it's the Elite Light Infantry Battalion. It's not this kind of guy. It's not this guy here. The, these, these, they're too big. They, they can't, they cannot. Uh, do an airdrop. Oh, I, I'm seeing already. There's the Hills Arctic, Hills Desert. Yeah, there's a lot of combinations here. Mountain woods, mountain forests. So there's a difference between woods and forest. Woods, I imagine, are probably larger. Yeah, this unit cannot be uh, airdropped at all. This looks different here, too. It looks, it, it's blue. I might just be kind of gushing over things that really aren't changed. <laughs> I have to be careful on that. Uh, but anyway, Gurkha Brigade, Japanese can't get that. Light Transport, okay, we can't. Motorcycle Recon, yeah. Garrison Detachments, that's actually kind of funny that Garrison Detachments can be airdropped because, good God, um, A garrison detachment here. It doesn't. I don't think it's going to show. Yeah, there's a way. One thousand. How the heck can you do? Uh, I just don't see how you can do a garrison drop. A uh, garrison detachment airdrop. I, I know there is some tech. Um. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> that is far far cool. I'm losing my train of thought in this regards here. Uh. What is it under industry? Construction, right? Or did that go away? Infantry. Garrison deployment capability, where you could drop the weight of uh, garrisons by 980. So, I mean, I suppose technically with that, tr with that learned, you could then, the weight will drop by quite a bit, so you could then airdrop them. But I don't think that's how that works. Maybe it does now. Uh, battle commanders, we'll have plenty as Japan. Uh, political leaders and player leader, yeah, of course. Uh, this is what I was talking about. You can disable the intro for a year. You can close it and review it anytime you want to. And, uh, and honestly, well, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, strategic resource trade, this hasn't changed at all. But also, also gives you the breakdown of what all is required to make sure that you're... Um, <sighs> You're not getting any uh, mouses, any hits to your industry. You'll need so much of uh, the, these specials in, in order to, um, you know, to maintain the amount of industry that you got going on. Plus certain things like uh, for Japan, for ship build speed, we're going with uh, Vicar Steel. We'll need to make sure we've got copper. Um, that way our ship building doesn't get impacted poorly. Um, we're not going to really be building armor all that much, but as Germany, uh, America, Russia, yeah, 
these are the ones that you need to kind of keep an eye out for. Zinc, these are the bonuses that they provide. Tungsten and all these, these are all the different bonuses that they, that all these special strategic resources provide. Um, Science Minister, that yeah, that hasn't changed so far. None of this has really changed here. Okay, this is pretty big too, and I think the the um, new version notes indicated that some of this kind of changed a little bit. Could be wrong. I know some of the leader aspects changed. Some of the tech changed too. So a lot of new stuff I'll be getting into here. And honestly, it's not going to help me if I'm going, well, what was it before? I just need to roll the punches and go with the changes, you know, that, that are implemented here. But all your all your ministers have the uh, possibility of providing like a percentage increase towards getting a free free building more buildings you get great Div uh, division composition blah 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 <laughs> uh, buildings line with the ministers here's what various other buildings do as well too naval invasions ministers and economy unit training and combat experience there was a big change on this here that I read. This looks like it's the same, but maybe that's been changed here. Um, we're going to disable that for a year, so we don't have to keep keep running into it. I just have to say, I, yeah, this map looks far, far, far better. Oh, were there changes? Like, I don't think there were physical changes to the map. Like, things got, um, like, islands got put in place or removed. I don't think they have it. Wow, the islands look even so much different. Oh, that's some of these pictures I think are kind of newish. Maybe not. Actually, I think they are. I think they include like more pictures of provinces and stuff like that. Oh, come on now. There we go. This island's so small. You kind of have to like click around quite a bit there. Yeah, I think they changed or at least included far more pictures of the of various provinces and things like that. That is pretty cool. It used to be like well, like here, these two islands use the same picture. But yeah, they're like, it looks like they're using uh, a whole bunch of new pictures from World War II there. Um, yeah, Singapore, I think it's fairly, fairly normal there. Ah, that's so, so cool. Let's go back to the first tab here. We've got a bunch of stuff to kind of go through. Actually, we'll do that here in a moment. Let me uh, take a look and see what else has changed. Oh, wow. Okay. Huge change all throughout here. Cleaner looking. I like this. So this whole entire section is is your builds, which I think that's still the same. Um, used to be over here. This portion, I think. I again, it's not going to bode well for me if I'm going to sit here trying to figure out what was it before. Just let me roll the punches and see what's going on here. So now we got our um, our. Um, Transports. This section here is where all your transports are set out. And then we got our trade routes here. So I kind of like this. It's three different panes. This is one whole entire pane, which that makes sense. But you know, here's your transports, here's your trades. Those kind of go hand in hand. I like that. Strategic resources available to you as uh, for your production for your nation. Yeah, I like that on top there. This is the build queue. And we're going to actually start filling it out pretty soon here. But yeah, I like that this whole entire pane, that's what it is. And this is, this whole entire pane is what you're able to build and what it, what it takes to get to that build. These used to be on the top here. This whole entire section used to be on top here. 
I like where it's at now. It's kind of like it's more centrally focused. I can um, <clears throat> I can take a look in, at a glance instead of looking and having to draw my eyes from left to right to kind of have an idea of what's what. I just look straight down here <clears throat> in this little section. Le uh, less movement my eyes are needing to do in order to have a good idea of how my economy is working. It's going to take a little bit to get used to, perhaps, but I, I thoroughly love this. It's a great change, guys. Great change. <clears throat> yeah, and the tooltips are still the same. No, no changes in, in there. Um, I forget. It. I think this was kind of like here-ish or something. I don't know. But anyway, this in this kind of manner here, much easier to, to work with and deal with. Uh, let's kind of, yeah, let's do that. Um, uh, what is this? I mean, I'm assuming it's building a regiment just because of the, this with the little X over here means, you know, you're building a regiment or battalion or something like that, but, uh, precisely that is what it is. Okay, cool. I wish there was a way, and really, I guess there's no way that you can't do it, but I wish there was a way that all this, especially for, for a couple of these, could better fit in here. Like maybe get um, locked in this frame that you could then scroll through to see what the because, yeah, this kind of looks messy, the fact that it goes all the way down to here. Um, is there anything kind of that goes beyond that point? Probably not. Huh. Um, Yeah, if there's a way that it could get uh, get locked into this window here, and then a scrollable uh, function would be would break out, to, so you can kind of go scroll through here and take a look. That'd be really cool. Um, I think this was always here like this. I'm not sure. Again, I I should be spending time on figuring out, but I'd like. Yeah, actually, you know what? This, I think, used to be up top here or something like that. You would then select, and it would tell you. I, I don't remember. But anyway, clicking something like light armor, build time, 260 days, IC cost, 18, manpower, 2.5. This tells me right away. Oh, what is... Yeah, that lowers the IC cost by doing reserves. And that's... I'm going to be building some um, some light armor battalions here, regiments, whatever, whatever size that this technically is. Um, I'm going to be building some of these to staff out the light armor uh, units, divisions that I've got already. So I'd kind of like strengthen them, stiffen them up somewhat. But I think I might build them up as reserves so that way their IC cost can be reduced by a bit. I think I got to build three of them. That's 54 IC. We're here. It would just be 42. So I could save 12 IC by building them as reserves. Also take less manpower too. And then when you know, build them, uh, when war hits, then okay, then uh, jack up uh, my reinforcements. But I like this. This is nice and clean. This. Actually, yeah, this used to be used to be a picture over here. I think I don't know if this used to be bigger or something, but this the picture used to be up in the top right corner here. So the yeah, this being here, all this being here. Once I selected what I want, this tells me the important information that I need in a nutshell. Not to mention also highlights it here so I can kind of, you know, look at all the specifics again. But when I'm in the production queue and I'm looking to build something, I need to know how long it's going to take 
what its cost is going to be to me um, financially, uh, in other words, through my industry, and also to my manpower. And those are the three big ones that I just need to worry about. Uh, you know, basically these three things here. The rest, not really so much so. Um, yeah, I like this. I like this indeed. Uh, we need to be at war, and if I could put her to be able to train underground resistance cells. I don't think I've ever used that, but okay. Uh, convoys and escorts are up here. Cool. So we could... Boom. Yeah. Uh, don't ever know what that is here. What, what is this for? This portion. Um... Okay. So division. Okay. Oh, so this this. Wow. This is a little bit more different here. Yeah. So if I want to build a. Um, oh, interesting. So I'm building a new armor division, for example. Cool. It fills it out. This looks sharper. This all definitely looks much, much better, too. Look, It looks uh, far sharper, like higher contrast. Um, Tooltips are still the same, yeah. <clears throat> but the, uh, the colorized portions definitely let you know what things you're hitting in order to get your combined arms bonus. And again... The important aspects here, if I want to build a brand new light armor unit, it's going to take that long, cost this much, take that many men. Pretty sure this has always done that too. Um, okay, so the increase in terrain now and the different map functions means that this section is a lot bigger. But you know what? I feel that it used to be even bigger bigger than this with fewer terrain because it used to be like more stats or something or the stats were just placed in such a way that it made this seem larger I'm not sure but you, you can see there's three different arctic types now it's plain arctic arctic woods arctic forests um I thought there was like mountain Oh, yeah, there is. There's Mountain Desert. Oh, and there's Mountain Arctic. Okay, so mountains, there's six different types of mountains, six different types of hills, four different types of highlands Highlands now, three different types of Arctics, and then if you add in the hills and mountains, that's five. Bokage, marsh, swamp. I think those, I think it just used to be just swamp, but uh, I, yeah, I like this breakout now. So, yeah, this is very cool overall. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of like that. But air wings. Again, I'm liking that whole entire aspect. It will be building CAG and lots of it. See, this is what I'm talking about. Why can't the others do this same thing too? So you can kind of, so it snaps to this frame and you can drag through and take a look at everything that needs that's there uh flotilla carry the same thing here which i think that's still the same though i thought this was like smaller or something like that this is now um oh, i didn't know that we could click on these is that a change or is this something that's always been and i've never really noticed that Um, I feel that's kind of newish too. I thought it was something that was like down here or something like that. It, yeah, the the gain practicals. This is far, far, far better. I like this. I think I think this was like down here or something like that. But I like this being the top part, being where your uh, you know your builds again. The important information is all here. You know how much in practicals am I gaining? Uh, how many can I build? You know, or how many am I going to build? Uh, how much is it going to cost? Yeah, 
yeah, I like I like the way production queue is here. I feel like I'm spending most of this uh, first turn, first episode, just gushing over how everything looks here, but eh, it is what it is. All right, we'll get, we'll get all this worked up too. Here's all our practicals and uh, uh, theor theory. Yeah, infantry theory, infantry practical. I kind of wish maybe this was a little bit larger too. Um, but you know what? I don't. I don't know how to make how that. How we'd be able to do that? It just hit me. All these icons are far. Well, not all the icons, but the majority of these icons are far different. These especially. Oh yeah. These are changed. These kind of change a little bit. The big changes all throughout here too, and far sharper looking too. So I, I, I'm I was used to the old method of how things were and whatnot, but now at a at a glance looking at this, it's like it makes more sense to me what these things are. Nation, it's a flag. I think that's always been, but nonetheless, it's like okay, and it's out in relief here too. Yeah, I like I like the way that looks. Politics. Unless there's more parties here, um, which that's a possibility. I don't I really don't remember. Um, going through the through the, I know there's some changes to the Japanese leaders. I think uh, Smiling Oil Man got changed. That was in the um, the notes. Yeah, it's not they're not as good as they were before. Um, there's some also other changes, but I don't recall what they are. Prince of Terror doesn't seem quite as bad as they did before. Maybe I'm misremembering. Um... There has been some changes to your uh, Minister of Sciences. I remember seeing something on that. Yeah, I think the, the these got changed. Um, these used to be quite higher. Rear carrier specialist. I can almost remember that was like a 15% for the money, minus 50% for money, and 10% for aircraft carrier practical clay. I think. I think. Supposed to be some new leaders. I'm not, uh, not really seeing any that like jump out at me. Like, oh, we're brand new. <sighs> May have to play through, of course, to see more. This, yeah, that's all the same too. That's that's still good. This is politics, cool. Uh, oh, this I think is a little bit new. So this is who's in charge, so control click. Government has no elections or imperial. All right. Um, this looks far different. I mean, well, maybe not far different, just more in relief, more contrast involved here. It just looks, it looks different in that regards. But I do like how that's, that how that is. Theaters, I don't see any difference in there. St uh, strategic, don't really see much difference here. Well, okay. I don't think there's anything that can be done here. Again, I kind of wish there was a way that... That th this top part could be like this could be pinned in here and then you could use a scroll you know scroll function to scroll through and and see because there's so many different types of things here in in these pages that's like well they scroll out so far you can't you're gonna lose track on some of this stuff here Is some of these things here. Some things like I have no idea what they even are. 
yeah, mirror buildings. There's so many buildings, it just carries over all the way over there. I mean, obviously, you need this scroll f function here for your all your provinces, but a scroll function like down here on the bottom, so you could scroll through, like keep keep that first, uh, like an Excel spreadsheet, for example. You lock this uh, column, you lock that column, and then you scroll through, so your second through whatever columns can scroll, 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 so you can see everything. That would be great if that could be done. I don't believe it. I don't believe it's something that can be done, though. Um, this all looks same. Yeah, similar. Obviously, Italians, two places where they, they have aluminum available to them. Uh, Japanese... Um, don't have anything on this page. But we do here. So nickel. Yeah, here we've got that kind of overlap again. It's like, ugh, really don't like the way it looks. Much specific momentums. Actually, it's copper, not nickel that we have. Copper we have. That's Japan. Apologies, I had a had a sneeze there. Ugh. These are all my politicians. All well, the brigades that we have. Another another aspect too. I really wish it could be locked in here, and then you could use a scroll wheel to scroll up and down, so you can see uh, strategic warfare. Though this does, this hasn't changed either. Um, just curious. Yeah, none of the tab windows are movable, but the strategic warfare is. I do like to take a look at this, uh, especially when war is going on from time to time. Just kind of keep an eye on like how things are going. Not that, you know, there can be major changes if you, you know, to, to the way things go. Um, yeah, so far, so far, so far, so good. I like how things are looking here. Let's continue on here getting set up for the first turn. Uh, so annual espionage focus, economic boost, choose puppets, industrial focus, military academy, seaport, railway, road. Um, I don't remember Japan starting with all three of those. Maybe they do. Light transport, truck transport activations. Mixed support brigade starts and help to Ab Abyssinia. Bank for international settlements. This got changed. This is big. Um, Annex Manchuka. Okay, let's close that real quick and take care of some of these things here. So, boom, boom. These are all the same as before. No big changes to any of them. These are just basically the windows that let you know that you know an event has been selected. This ha has been a big change, though. It used to be, you could sell a certain amount of <coughs> Uh, supplies and depending upon how much you sold determined how much of an improvement in your uh, economic future <laughs> for that year you got um, the more supplies you sold the uh, more IC you got for example and you know more money and stuff like that but now for this version BIS uh, Bank for National Settlements has changed so you can either be you have one of four choices uh, near as I can see at this point I think that's all all that it is you can say eh, not going to do it and it's for all the same amount you lose a thousand supplies and you gain 200 money um but you can do you can go science investment where um for the next year 
your supplies get impacted in order for you to gain additional leadership. You can go industry, where again your supplies get impacted for uh, additional IC. Um, you go banking, where you, again your supplies get impacted, where you can gain money. Um, I think for the very first year we're going to go banking just so that way we can get that extra little oomph. Uh, yeah, I think we need, I need to, I need to negate some of the minuses I have here for hard and uh, yeah, all that other stuff there. So we're going to go banking investment this year. Next year we'll do something different. Abyssinia. Uh, even though this kind of uh, impacts our relationship with uh, Italy, I still go for the full troops. We'll see if there has been a change made in the event here, but after um, Italy takes Abyssinia, shortly thereafter, uh, we gain Japan gains um, a militia unit or something like that. I, there's a unit that we gain. Um, there's something similar, for Ger something similar for Germany as well, or same thing. You can uh, negatively impact your relationship with Italy, but again, it doesn't really matter uh, because, uh, or at least it never did matter in the past. Maybe that's been fixed, so it might. But there's all there's events that occur later on in 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 the war that bring you know a friendship with with Italy. So this is like this means nothing other than do. You, you know, do you want to um, gain the benefits that you gain after uh, choosing what you choose? And I guess, I mean, if I was playing Germany, I want to bring Italy into my fold, like, right away. Sure, I may not, I may want to do nothing. I may, may not want to negatively impact my, uh, impact my relationship with Italy, but as Japan, I don't care. Losing the manpower, fuel, supplies, not that big of a deal. Uh, for what we gain afterwards, so I always do that. We'll go ahead and activate both the trucks and the light vehicles. Uh, we've got a couple more things here still. This is for Manchuria. We're going to have them focus on army. Just tell them, build up your army. Um, let's go here first. Espionage and spies. Nothing here has really changed. I don't need to... Well, I probably do need to increase our unity. Um, because, is it, uh, here? No, unity is at least 60. We're good. Uh, we're not going to go to war economy right away. Plus our stuff's good there already. Oh, there's already some changes here. We'll, we'll, I'll bring this up to our attention just a bit here. Um. So we're fascism, so yeah, we can go to that. That's fine. Uh, heavy industry, you have to be at war. Unity is at least 80. So that's probably... So I think I want to increase our national unity at start for the year. I mean, the other option would be increase our, our uh, IC efficiency, I feel. I don't need the extra spies, per se. That We don't need the political spying. Naval intelligence, we don't need to worry about that till 1942. Um, Army intelligence, if uh, and the reason why is because we really don't need naval organization up until we're at war with America, UK, Naval Intel as well. We don't need that. Army Intelligence, we probably don't need to worry about that until next year. For the land intel and, and land organizations, we probably won't worry about that until then. Uh, Air Force Intelligence, air organization would be nice, but a 1% right now, eh, that would be helpful, I guess. Spy catching me pretty good, I guess. We don't need to reduce um, threat. Don't need to change our neutrality. We're not going to war any sooner than we have to. So, uh, yeah, let's take a point twenty-five in uh, neutrality there. Um, oh, I think that is new. I don't think that that was here before. Maybe so. But anyway, with Japan, I always go with the long-term investment for the first year. So I can get the uh, Railway Tycoon uh, option. And if we go to Strategic Effects, oh, which actually, let's take a look at this window. Um... No, nothing here's changed. Yeah, it's still the same, I feel. 
this, I don't know, it kind of looks sharper, I guess, maybe. I'm not sure. Rear Tycoon, 2% uh, IC efficiency plus 10% uh, supply throughput. The other option would be um, National Highways, which has half of those. So Railway, Railway Tycoon is the better of the two to get. And as Japan, I always feel for the very first year, I want to boost up my supply throughput by 10%. So that way I can get ready <coughs> for war with China. Having a 10% supply throughput when I'm fighting Japan, uh, fighting uh, China, yeah, definitely needed. Um, the other option is mining, which um, I typically take for Germany, uh, just so I can get all those extra resources. Japan's not going to get as much IC as Germany will, so and we'll get we'll get plenty of resources in our conflict with uh, China, and the agriculture, the farms, not that big of a deal. Um, the national manpower don't need it right away. Um, let's get back to diplomacy here. Motorized, mixed support choices, leader backstory. I want to hold off on this. Annex Manchuko. I think that's new. I don't think we've had that option before. <clears throat> so, player backstory. Let's get started. Um, oh, this is new. So this is what all these different things do. It kind of gives you a little bit of a, this gives you like a um, flavor text, if you will. Staunch political lobbyists, you spread patriotism out of your passion, but not everyone is drinking your Kool-Aid. So yeah, you can see if we hover over it, that uh, that flavor text makes sense when the tooltip says, well, we have an increase in territorial pride. But there's also some extra dissent. <laughs> you know. uh, pioneering scientists, scientific community adores you. Potential soldiers, not so much. Territorial pride is there's a negative. Daily dissent, though, there's a positive of 5%. Oh, wait, that's political negotiator. Uh, unit recruit time increased of 2% chance. So that's where the you know soldiers don't admire you quite so much. Uh, gave you up for adoption when you were born. The bitch. <laughs> You're fiercely independent, but the general population simply doesn't improve your strong arm tactics. So national unity goes down. That makes sense. But and we get additional espionage, making us independent. Um, for Japan, I typically go with this, the researching pioneer, just for that improvement in research efficiency of 5%. So something that would take, say, 100 days to research or say better, 200 days to research. Now it takes 190 days to research. Uh, if that was the only bonus. Um, the others... I never really played with the others. I'm not... Yeah, this, I'm not... Yeah, don't really care about... Though I could see if I was playing Russia... Perhaps being a staunch pup, uh, political lobbyist for that territorial pride, that could be good to have. Um, or the UK, even. That could be good to have, though dissent overseas for Britain would kind of ruin them. Uh, a political negotiator, maybe as America I could see doing this, so that we could lower your dissent quite a bit there. Uh, correspondent, getting uh, improvement to unit recruit time. <clears throat> yeah, so basically it's you choose choose it's choose one of two. There's three three different options, if you will, and you can choose an A or B of each option. Uh, they're each uh, opposite of each other, but yeah, pioneering scientist. Oh, there's no flavor text here for father. Oh, well. Um, two, four, six. Yeah, the same thing here. There's three different options. There's an A and B for each option, or it's an opposite. Um, as Japan, I will pick uh, Adventurous Sailor. So that way we get a, a, a improvement to the organization regain. And a naval organization uh, greatly improves, too. Player backstory. Um, so again, there's, well, realistically, there's four options. One of them is kind of like a neutral, 
and then the other three are an A and B of each, and you get to kind of choose, you know, which one you want the opposite of. Um, I would say became a child apprentice in a factory, so we get some resources. Or we love to daydream and build things. Yeah, let's do that and get the improved IC. Um, our childhood hero. Um, let's say industrialist. Really hurting my manpower imp increase. Um, but all for a plus six percent in IC. That, that could be a make or break moment here. As a young adult. Um, I'll follow my father's footsteps, I'll always do it as Japan. I'm going to become a sailor in the Navy because you can see it improves our naval build time. Ships will get built a little bit quicker. So that, um, oh, I'll tell you, this carrier that takes 35 months, which you can, you can break that out into, oh goodness, what is that, a thousand? 1150 days or something like that. Um, a 2% uh, improvement on the build time there. That would knock it down by about 25 days or something like that. So 1125. Not, I mean, obviously not a huge improvement per se, but. If you can shave them, if I could shave a month off of building a carrier, yeah, <laughs> definitely well worth it. Plus, I think specifically what you choose here as your as your player backstory as a young adult, what you choose here can influence or pro um, proc uh, procedurally uh, create um, a, uh, a series of events that will occur as the game progresses. Or I've seen it where, um, like a couple years in, it'll be something. They'll say something like, um, "Your your history as a as a sailor has provided dividends, and your navy improves the organization by one percent, or something like that." So you'll have stuff like that that'll happen. So yeah, we'll go ahead and say that. All right, make support. So first thing, mech support, we want amphibious armor. So that way our Marines have some armor when they want to go ashore. Uh, next, recon. And then next, engineers. And lastly, kind of a catch whatever I want. Um, I don't know, not infantry tank, no assault gun, anti-air, probably or just artillery. We are done. All right, motorized support. Really don't have, won't have a lot of motorized, but this will be fairly straightforward. Recon, engineers, artillery. So what I've already chosen, um, and light armor because we do have light armor. All right, let's let time advance a little bit here and, and also save real quick, kind of. Put a fresh save here. Alrighty, let's go back to diplomacy. Uh, new day is dawning. This will basically create my personalized leader unit. Um, annex Manchuko. In order to solve administrative and supply issues in the Oregon Soviet Union, our generals recommend we annex or puppet state Manchuko. Um, I really don't want to do that. I prefer to have Manchuko separate here so i guess i don't click on that for a while and just leave it be um let me check something here so we got a i think i see that the same standard type uh, units nothing's really changed in that regards okay good 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 um next step here we're gonna go through some of our resources so we need to, yeah, this just looks so much cleaner, so much better. We're going to boost up industry, coal, and steel, because we actually have metal in here. We're going to put in a uh, steel refinery. Um, 74, let's put in two coal fields there. 
Okay, so that's everything. Oh, here we go. We got something here. Well, let's put a second coal field in there. Uh, yeah, more than one refinery is not going to help there. It's only 3.3 that we're generating. Same here, 3.9 is all we're generating. Let's go ahead and put a factory there. Factory there. Ditto. Want, want IC getting built. Uh, so rares, we're going to put another rares in here, put another two coal in here. And it's okay if I start getting like, you know, if I'm going like well above what I need to for my energy. Because there will come a time where we're going to be like kind of hurting <laughs> for, uh, for some of these resources. Basically everywhere that's got an IC already, I'm going to go ahead and build one more. And while I'm running through everything, I'm going to just check and see, do we, can we build any additional resource stuff? Like here, uh, let's put another steel in there, steel refinery. Another steel refinery, we can put another rares, put two more coal. Coal in here. I'm doing that because it's double digits, and I figure well, a two, level two in there, probably help out a bit. Same here, level two would probably help out a little bit. I don't think the islands have anything of great worth. They do not. All right, let's get into Korea here. Again, building up our IC because we'll, we'll be needing it. My ultimate goal. Um, is just to prosecute the war in China as you know we would normally. Um, I will be providing. Uh, we got doubled, so I'll put a coal field, extra coal field. <laughs> we will be providing uh, China its own leadership. Uh, so we'll you know provide them, make them a puppet once we're all said and done there. Uh, actually, let's deal. So I'm gonna get a second one of that. Um, but I will take the coastlands of China. Uh, that tends to be the richer part of China, where wherein we can get um, some additional IC, of course, but also some of the resources there too. Um, I have played I played this so many different times, did different versions as Japan, where I've like gone with the complete conquering of China. And I find, quite honestly, that conquering all of China is not necessarily the best deal. Let me increase this air base by a bit there. Here, we need to increase this naval base by a couple. And we're going to put here put it there yeah, because I think this becomes uh, Menjiang. Oh, um, steel and coal. So yeah, let's put a steel in there and we'll put up a, an oil rig. Yeah, that'll work. Um, I think I'll put an air base two, three, four over here so I can get an air base on the mainland. Right, I improved the uh, naval base here by a couple steps. I should probably should do it one more. Um, just to in improve the amount of supply that gets brought in. Um, seven infrastructure and current we can transport. So actually, I guess the port doesn't really improve. I thought the port also had a... Um, I thought ports the size of the port determined how, also determined how much supply could come in. So it's looking like it's just strictly what the infrastructure is here. Oh, the port here can ship in 23.38 units of supply of fuel every day. Yeah. The infrastructure, the infrastructure here, we can transport 617 supplies of fuel per day, but the port can only bring in 23. So I need to improve. So if it's 23, it must be like 12 per. 
So putting two more in here is going to double it to 46. Let's put it one more. Um, so that'd be 58, 58 to 60, somewhere around there. Okay. So let's go to our production queue here. We're requesting 341. We're not seeing anywhere near that amount. Uh, but that's fine. Um, I think this is a good spread with how I have things. So let's put the naval base and this air base, the new air base I'm making towards the forefront, both air bases. Um, yeah, I like the way it looks overall. Um, let us put our upgrades to about 15, I guess. Well, 14 is fine. Do the same thing with our reinforcements. That would automatically or arbitrarily push up what uh, supplies we need. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, overall, uh, um, what I'm looking at doing. So go to war with China, normal time. Um, if there are any events still for going to war with Russia, we're not going to prosecute those, but we'll take the, the events that basically still have us do our uh, little conflict that goes on, that historically went on. Still do that, but anytime we're being asked to go to war with Russia, we shall not do so. In fact, my ultimate goal is to try to stay out of Russia in this, uh, in this playthrough. Um, we may change that, we may pivot, and I hope it won't be <laughs> a much later in, in the war type of pivot where I don't have enough armor to be able to take on Russia, because I'm just counting on the fact that I, all I need is light armor to handle all my conflict here in, uh, in Southeast Asia uh, through, you know, into uh, Middle Asia, Middle Eastern area. Uh, I don't. I, I won't need medium or heavy tanks, but if it comes down to it, and Germany needs help, I, I'll have to. I'll need money because I'll need at that point to buy heavy tanks or medium tanks, whatever Germany has available, so that way I can then in turn build those units to go uh, prosecute a war in, in Russia. But ideally, just want to stick in China. If China war takes me. Three, four years. Uh, we're starting mid 37, so 38, 39, 40. If I don't finish until you know late 40, that's fine. Even even early 41, again, that's fine. We'll want to keep maintaining our a combat footing, so that way we can get the improvements in uh, IC that we'll get. And then once China and all its associated friends are taken care of, um, there used to be a couple of events that would fire one for Tibet. Once you take Tibet, then Xinjiang would fire. So if those are still in place, I'll go ahead and do just that. And then 1941, when that kicks off, we'll be going, uh, we'll be taking war against the United States. Uh, quickly deploy as rapidly as we're able to into uh, Siam. So we can then move against the UK uh, towards Singapore and into Burma. Uh, and also make some moves here in uh, Borneo and, and the Dutch East Indies. A lot of, a lot of stuff, a lot of historical stuff, and we'll see if I can't pull uh, pull it off or not. But that's the idea. We'll we'll see if we can't uh, get that taken care of. Technology, um, espionage. We're gonna knock this down to about 0.56. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, diplomacy. I don't need it up quite so high, but let's let's just do yeah. 0 0.6, 0 0.06 is fine. The AI does a whole bunch of trade since I have it set on AI trade. Uh, the computer's going to run a bunch of trades for me, and that's going to eat up my diplomacy. But at a certain point, Japan gets leveled. I, what I feel is leveled in resources coming in that it needs and resources going out that I can then turn that off and just do it manual. You know, accept accept incoming offers as they as they uh, arrive or or decline on them. Uh, we are going to start off with some. Uh, nation type text here. Um, and then industry. So this used to be, this used to go down a lot further, I thought. That's interesting. Yeah, I think this is a new section here. 
um, not sure why it's saying not researching. Um, so we're going with casting. He's going to rebuild still. Yeah, so casting. Very interesting. Yeah, this is a much shorter window now. It used to be all the way down to the bottom there. Uh, radio detection, sure. Radios we need as well. Construction, industry. Get airports up as well here. Uh, we're not gonna not gonna touch this whole entire area at all. Um, yeah, we'll get that going. Uh, let me get up to twenty. I think that's where we'll call it then. I point. Let's get the Derek Garrison deployment capability as well. All right, so we're we're at where we want to be there. Uh, politics. Um, we're gonna kick it down to a six month draft. Increase our IC. Hurts our officer recruitment, but that's all right. I'd rather have the IC at this point. Um, big thing here. Training laws used to be broken down by branch of service. Um, Army, or land, air, sea. Now it's just strictly training laws, period. Which, quite honestly, I, pref I think I prefer it that way. As... Japan, or usually, I, well, I guess usually for minor nations, um, especially say like landlock minor nations, I I liked that kind of breakdown by the by the branch of service, because um, for example, Hungary, Hungary does not need to spend a dime or didn't need to spend a dime in naval uh, training laws. There's no way they could have a navy. Well, not a start. They would have to they would have to work on conquering adjacent countries that have access to uh, the sea. Um, but like even, for example, you know, Finland. Finland, I went, uh, playing Finland, I wouldn't care about having any kind of naval aspect. It was air and air and uh, land that I worried about. So that'd be, it'd be nice to break it down by that aspect there. But only having it in one, I think, that works just fine. I, I like this. Um, specialist training, sure, that's where I think I would want to be at. Though, as we can see, you are they're making some trade offs, big trade offs here. Alrighty, uh, we're gonna do that. Yeah, this looks so much cleaner, so much better. I love it. Um, I'm not going to annex Manchuka. I'm going to leave it the way it is. I kind of hope that goes away because I'd hate to see that green mark this whole entire time here. Well, yeah, let's keep going. I'm not going to do anything further here till just yet. Uh, choose your focus. Oh, we've got a whole bunch of stuff happening. So choose your focus. Um, for the first year... Oh, that's right. i got to check the utility window. Kind of see what's going on there. Um, first year, for pretty much any country I play, I always pick natural resources. So that way it gives me that... Gives me some of the, the things that I need to help uh, jumpstart my economy. Um... And then after, say, the first year, I'll then switch over to general economy, so that way my IC goes up. <clears throat> and then in Japan's case here, down the road, we'll be selecting Navy, uh, probably 1940 perhaps. We'll, we'll select Navy so we can get those improvements in naval build time, organization, things of that kind of nature. But for now, natural resources. Uh, engine type, I think we're doing light aircraft. Uh, looks like light aircraft, diesel, uh, cast, light aircraft, diesel, cast. So this one here, because we're already, we're further ahead in diesel and cast armor than we are in the other two. And I just go for light aircraft. Kind of, I feel it's fairly historical for Japan. I, I feel that their aircraft are kind of lighter in nature than heavy heavier, and I prefer the quicker build time. I'd like to get my CAG out quickly and, you know, yada yada. And I'm not really too 
worried about the uh, heart attack. In this case here, the heart attack being so low. So we'll do that. Uh, ship armor focus. Oh, inner surface rivalry. Let's um, favor the IJA this year because at a certain point towards the end of the year, I'm going to be building for my hero unit. I'm going to be building a, a marine unit around him. Um, we're going to be building or start building uh, some armor. Again, I want the three. I think there's three armor divisions I have. Uh, light armor divisions I have. They're very, very weak, though. They're like three to 5,000 total manpower. I want to bolster them uh, with some selected equipment that'll garner all throughout our nation. But also, I'll be making those light armor um, battalions, regiments, whatever. Uh, the 3,000 men variety to kind of help bolster the size of, of those light armor divisions that I've got, make it a little more, have a little more oomph to them. So that's why I will favor the IJA this year and next year for that matter in uh, 1937. 1938 onward, we favor the IJN because, yes, we're building lots of air and naval. Still build um, land and some armor. But largely, it's going to be naval. But anyway, IJA this year. Ship. Um, I do open hangar, and I think it's Victor, Vickers, non-cemented steel. Should kind of say in here. Japanese version of Vickers steel used copper instead of nickel, because simply because of nickel shortages. Indeed, we have tons of copper. So Vickers, non-cemented steel, open hangar. Um, we lose more metal, but build time improves... Um, I want to say, yeah, the closed hanger, it's either open or closed hanger, which if we look on the carrier here, open hanger, it's an improvement in morale a bit more, which I find that's good. And I think, Oh, maybe it's closed hanger then that I take. Uh -huh. Closed hanger, lowered morale for the CAG, um, but the carriers have an improvement in strength, cost a bit more. Oh, their CAG size goes down, but you can take then double hanger, which then increases their so, uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's always, Japan always take open hanger for the uh, improvement in morale. Um, and then I can take the side elevator for improvement in strength, further improvement in morale, etc. So yes, open hanger and Vickers non-cemented steel. There we go. Uh, still all the Annex Manchuka. I probably should like save, click that, see what happens. Because I'll bet you if I annex Manchuria, Manchuko, I can in turn um, puppet them, you know, make, make them a puppet. Um, what do we got here? Doot, doot, doot. Oh, so yes, do your worst with, with revolts. No, sorry, I'm wimping out. Revolt risk drops greatly, but also your money drops greatly. That is interesting. I didn't think that was always there like that. I thought it was like, you know, either or kind of type deal. But yeah, you do your worst. I know I there's a certain somebody that has a YouTube channel of their own. Uh, that uh, one, of the, one of the things I remember him saying a few years ago was he never understood why that rebel thing was there. He... He hated revolts because it he felt like it just added a layer to the game that was not needed. I personally say otherwise to that. I feel that yes, it is something that's needed <clears throat> because uh, say you're playing as um, you know, as Russia here uh, or well Germany, uh, and you're pushing deep into Russia, and all of a sudden you get some revolts behind you. They're starting to cut off your your supply to your frontline troops. That's where that's fairly realistic, I feel, for the game. At least provides a level of realism for the game. 
um, and is a little bit more than just an annoyance. At that point, it, be it could become a you know life or death kind of type deal. Um, it, granted, for the vast majority of the revolts, they're like, ah, why? You know, <laughs> I, I can stop it super easy. But yeah, I, I feel that having it's good. Uh, we want it. We want a normal. Um, yeah, normal means you get bonuses and malices for owning or missing strategic resources. Um, dun, dun, dun. Each 200 IC requires one resource. And if you have below 100, you will not receive malices. So for our first, yeah, we need we need one of each. And looking at the strategic effects here, we're not actually in shortage four. Um, pretty much everything except for copper, we're in shortage one. Uh, copper, we probably are copper neutral. We may be uh, copper plus one. But anyway, having shortages would indicate that, yeah, there's some, there's, you can see the malices spread throughout there. We'll take a closer look at that a bit later. But let's do, let's do normal for right now. Uh, second naval armament supplement program. If I click yes on this, this will then put a whole bunch of these guys in the queue here. Yep, I can already see. Um, saw in the notes, Hear You becomes an event later on, don't know when, where we'll find out. But typically, Hear You started in here with uh, with Soryu and um, came out, actually, we come out, I think, much later than Soryu. But no, we don't have Hear You this time. Um, I feel. Like some of these are like they're well advanced than before. Yeah, uh, intriguing overall. Uh, let me bump this up. There we go. That's intriguing. I don't recall like all this stuff being almost done. Um, hmm. You know. I could push all this to the top, um, and and well, with the exception of the heavy cruisers uh, and a couple of the destroyers, everything will be done by spring. That is interesting. Uh, having the Zuiho uh, ready in February this year would be would be great. Normally, when I play. As Japan, there um, I don't. I go with a two light carrier group, and uh, sometime later on down in the war, China, then the Zuyo gets uh, built, and I, I fully staff them out. But yeah, that is intriguing. Um, lose one in descent. Actually, you know what? We're gonna do that for two two days. We'll get uh, two days of uh, full on builds and supply. A bit of a cheat with this. I'm, I'm going to hold off on the London Naval Treaty for, for two days. Get my descent up to one. Boom. Pop this. Drop that. Drop the descent down by one. Uh, but basically then get two free days of, of max builds and supply. Uh, government secretary focus. We're going to nationalize the private sector. Only a 40% chance of that. And... It looks like it may have worked. Compensation accepted plus 15%. Wow, okay. Uh, road network plus one. No differences there. Seaport or rail network. The all important supply throughput and IC efficiency. Seaport, increased money and resources. Current level of IC inefficiency or efficiency, whichever, is minus four. All right, oh, we got a bunch of stuff. Uh, yeah, the normal, normal stuff. Korean independence movement. Uh, we're gonna defend the status quo. If I co cooperate with the Korean, uh, Korean imperialist, Korea becomes a puppet, which with, um, oh, what is it? Not Manchuria, Menjiang. When Menjiang comes around and I have the option to go ahead and, and make them a puppet, I think with this, I will get to this, the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity prosperity Sphere, a little bit quicker. But I kind of I kind of want 
China for our um, China. I kind of want Korea for myself. There's uh, there's plenty of like this. Um, oh, which one is this here? Tungsten. So oh, I do have tungsten. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of resources available that I'm taking advantage of right now. So I I feel that we want to defend the status quo. I did play well as Japan once, and I um, think I did this, cooperate the Korean imperialist, but I could be wrong on that. I'm trying to remember if I did what happened, what what came about from that. I don't, I don't really remember now. But anyway, we're going to defend the status quo. Handling the Zapatsus, Zapatsus, I already pronounced that there, the financial click. Um, so basically you have two options. You can support and challenge, which they're both the same in regards to how much IC you get, or nationalize, militarize, which again, that's both the same amount of IC you get. So 5%, 10% bonus. But there's two options. Uh, we can support or challenge where it'll cost us money to support or ruling party support, which for me is not that big of a deal as Japan because we'll be changing our ruling party down the road. Uh, nationalize and militarize. Um, the nationalize is similar to support in that it's you get double the IC at double the cost of money, but also a cost at resources too. Basically, the, the nation of Japan is just throwing tons of money and resources to help out with the financial click, growing a little bit bigger. We can militarize them, which would then cost the same amount in money as support, but it would cost us a lot of goods here in peacetime, but not so much so, actually less consumer goods in wartime. That's actually not too bad, I feel, though that means we're gonna be kind of hamstrung for the first year and a half through middle 37, because um, we'll have to be throwing a whole bunch of IC, 10% uh, of our IC towards consumer goods. Um, not that, honestly, not that big of a deal, because again, it's only 18 months. So usually what I do is support the Zapatsus, so that way just, or uh, challenge rather, because again, I don't care about the ruling party support. Your ruling party changes as Japan, so it's a freebie 5% essentially. But I think this time I'm going to go, it's a harder game, I'm going to go with the Militarize. It's going to hurt my money. Um, and hurt, and that 10% IC is basically going to be thrown right away into consumer goods. But that's, that's only going to last for 18 months. When we go to wartime, boom. We'll get that 10% bonus back, because we won't be having to worry about consumer goods. And during war, the amount of consumer goods we need is lowered by another 2.5%. As Japan, I think as Germany, you really don't have to worry about consumer goods during wartime because with all the laws and effects that you can you can get, plus you know the way that uh, the way that nation works, yeah, you're not you're not spending anything. I feel uh, during wartime for consumer goods, but Japan, I believe you still are spending a bit. It's I don't think it's ever zero. So I will take the militarize. Basically, I'm just talking myself into into taking that. Uh, Greater East Asia co prosperity sphere. That's down here. Yeah, I, this has got to be changed. I, this is all easier to read for me. And here we go. Uh, there is four levels. Um, you got level one. You got level two. You got level th uh, level three, these three here, and then level four, those four there. Um, for level one, so if I had given Korea its own reigns there, um, we would have had two puppets, because Manchuria, yeah, we'd have Manchuria and Korea. So it is greater than, I don't know, it'd be It'd be equal to two. That's greater than 2.0 is equal to or less than three. Yeah, I don't know why it does it that way. I mean, 
basically the variable is how many puppets you have. So for level one, we only have one puppet. So it, met, it meets that requirement of equal to or less than three, but it's not greater than two. So if I if I make Korea a puppet, I think that's why I did it in one game, is because I was like, okay, we'll get Min Jiang down the road. We already have Manchuko. If I make Korea a puppet, we'll meet the requirements for level one so much sooner. Whereas <laughs> down the road from here, I kind of have to wait till after the, the Chinese war before I hit level one. Fortunately, the others, level two, three, and four, they all come into play fairly rapidly uh, once I get, um, uh, well, so I'll have Manchuria, uh, Menjiang, uh, China, I will uh, puppet, um, Thailand here, I'll be puppeting, uh, Siam as well. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Um, and I th I'll also be puppeting the Philippines, so that'd be like a sixth one as well. So there, there'll be plenty of puppeting opportunities coming down the road, it, just that it's going to take a while for the, um, the ones that I need for that particular uh, cool ability, you know, cool thing coming in. It, it's going to take a little bit here. But anyway, so yay. Um, yeah, in fact, yeah, because here the valid nations are Korea, Manchukuo, Minjiang, Republic of China, Siam, India, Burma, Indochina, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Personality effects. It's not going to affect us directly as Germany and Russia. They tend to have a more direct effect on you. But I think these also fire for the AI too, so sure. Uh, scripted invasions, sure. Uh, veteran unit opportunity, excellent. We lose money and supplies. So we pop over here, and we actually got two veteran divisions. So that is pretty cool. We'll go ahead and march them on down here to Keta. And on that note, let's take our hero. We're going to peel off the HQ defense attachment and military police and I'm going to bring him down over here as well we're not going to move stuff other stuff around just yet so let's slow this down not by that much there we go remember I want to hit one in descent okay so uh, budget reserves. Budget is settled. Sure. We'll be careful from now on. Creation of battle commanders. Well, we actually have those. Futures of Man uh, Future of Manchuria. Um, so we still have Annex Manchuko. Uh, let's do this here. Naval, historical naval plans. Naval build time and air build time get improvements. Yeah. Uh, natural resources have kicked in for us for the focus for natural resources and uh, ship armor production we have a all resources shortage for that okay um, do something real quick here let's save so it's given me another option here, basically, to take over Manchuria, which I already have here anyway, too. What I wonder is, can I... Oh, I one thing I need to do is um, get my consumer goods. We need 0 0.35, 0 0.35, looking at the very bottom line, 0 0.35. There we go. That way... Tomorrow will be at 1.0, and I can then hit this, and they'll wipe away my sins. <laughs> um, better and the better is we've at least got a couple days of build time and and everything here, you know, that we can put the IC towards. We also got a couple days of getting extra resources, which will be very helpful for us too. Okay, so what I'm wondering is if I annex them.
I don't know. Um, so that's like two options you have to take over Manchuko. I don't know why that, uh, that's something new. This is something new, Annex Manchuko. Because we still have the event. This is kind of what I'd be expecting to see is that, okay, you can take over Manchuria. I don't want to. Uh, we want to continue the uh, Manchurian project. Still have the Annex Manchuko, so um, what I'm kind of wondering though is if I annex it, would I gain any of the um, units that are here that are well, those are my guys. Would I gain the units that are here, and then this kind of feels so much like just. Um, here we'll move these guys down here. That, what, I'm, what I'm proposing is just sounds so much like cheating. Uh, annex Man Manchuria, get the units, move them towards the front lines, and then go into politics here and go to create puppet. Give Manchuria back. That just sounds so much like gaming gaming system. I didn't realize that was such a that province was there like that. That's such a small little province. <laughs> um, yeah, that sounds like gaming the system. I'm not going to do that. Uh, though, if this never goes away, I may just do it just to just to get that out of there. Annex them, wait a day, puppet them, get them back to you know the way they are. Though I kind of wonder then if annex annexing and then repuppeting them. Would that mess up? And the f there's a bunch of future events that that can help out Manchuria for you. I wonder if those get broken or not. I don't know. Well, we'll keep going. It, very much, though, liking this new version. It definitely looks really, really, really nice. All right. Fascist Militia Brigade. Short. Sure, activate. Uh, we need to go 0 0.05 now. I didn't go didn't go enough. We need to go we need to get to a full a full point. And actually do point zero six just to make sure. Cause this could technically be like nine point nine four nine, for example. You know, and I I want to make sure we get we get a full point there. Yeah, I'm just I'm still shocked by the fact that these are all like so close to being done. I never realized that. I always went with the uh, with my resources there first. All right, let's go another day here. Is that still? Yeah, Annex Manchuko still there. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, we're up one point. Uh, for the Emperor, we only get one railway gun. That's all we'll need. Uh, type 9395 Long Lance, just the information about it. Though we're all um, we're already researching it at this point. Um, point 43 spies, that's cool. I need to put this at 15. There we go. So all required resources ship our protected. Uh, Production happened to us. Cool. Uh, these are all our buildings. So we lost the effects of that. We'll do the London Treaty. And now we'll set that up to where it needs to be there. So we went, we went over, but that's all right. Points are one's fine. Not much in the way of builds here at this point, but those air bases will get finished out here in just a matter of months. Um, yeah, we don't need these. I don't need these things just yet. We'll hold off on all that. I need those things more so. Um... Uh, so yeah, we need to move from consumer product orientation to mixed industry, largely because of this consumer goods. Or no, 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 not that. This, this right here. 
here we need to move in the economic laws. We need to move from full civilian economy to basic mobilization. Because the consumer goods required during peacetime is 60% currently, we need to drop it down to 35%. Boom. And now we'll come here. Look at that. That's about 30 IC freed up, which will be split 15 and 15 to supplies and production. These I'll leave where they're at. We'll slowly improve those. Uh, research progress on our ships. Doesn't look like anything has changed there. Though I don't recall that negative modifier to money <laughs> being part of, part of it. I do recall there being a lot of uh, ship gains, though this looks like it's even more ship gains than I seem to recall too. Interesting. On that note, um, we probably want to switch to the light aircraft practical decay guy, small plane specialist, so we can get our planes tech up. We don't need ship tech at this point. So we'll do that. Yeah, Annex Machuco still there. Yeah, I yeah. I kinda hate that. I know when you're when you're fighting China, um we'll see it later on. There'll be a there'll be a particular point where We've taken so much Chinese land, it'll pop up with an option to um, create the Chinese puppet, which I don't like to do right away. I like to, I tend to like wait until we're all done in our conflict here before freeing up China, making them their own puppet. Uh, yes, we'll allow the events. Uh, IC goes down, lose 5,000 supplies. Offshore recruitment goes down. War regain goes up, though. Just really saw how much time we've spent so far on this. Uh, well, you know, I'm glad to be getting back into this fully. Um, very interested to see. There we go. Let's tweak that. Very interested to see what other changes are implemented. I just I cannot get over the way this looks. This looks so nice, so clean. We don't need to import supplies. What the heck are we doing? Good. God, um, you know what? We're going to diplomacy and stop automating that trade. Ah, we don't need that at all. Oh, you know what? I need to go into intelligence here. We need um, own spies, counter espionage, raise national unity. Um, let's yeah, there we go. Uh, for Axis, Germany, we need tech espionage. For allies, United Kingdom, tech espionage, and military esp espionage, yeah. Common turn, Soviet Union, uh, and disrupt their national unity. North America, United States, hi, yes. Military espionage, I think we're good there. Asia. Um, Republic of China, um, military, People's Republic of China, military, uh, Gungsi Click, military, Shanxi, military, Zibisan Ma, military, and Yunnan, military. There we go. Don't have any spies or anything like that. And actually, I don't be spending spies galore on all these guys. Yeah, that's good enough. Well, you know, let's go back. I don't want to. I don't want to spend spies on you, Dan. Quite honestly, I'll leave that on military espionage. If I change my mind, if I have like a. a a glut of spies. Sure, I'll send them all in, into, or not send them all in there, but I'll send some in there. All right, let's let it continue here. I'm going to wait a little bit, and I'll start advancing the speed a bit more here. Uh, my computer can handle speed five, not a problem. 
but I know the very first week or two, there's like a lot of stuff that goes on, especially for Japan. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. I don't want to be going too fast and causing issues. Though, one of the notes for the this version indicated that um, certain uh, Lua, L-U-A, uh, event checks will be happening at different times throughout the day. Where it all used to be happening at 3 a.m., it's now going to be at different times throughout the day. So hopefully that means we're not going to see, um, you know, the game choke. <laughs> um, so where are we at money-wise? Sure, we'll buy some rare materials from you guys. Um, yeah, that's that's land base, so we don't have to worry about. Yeah, I just such a different location. All this used to be on the bottom. This used to be up here. So flip-flopping it like this, different, but I like it. I really, really do like it. We need more metal, need more rares. Uh, let's bump up the steel refinery and this rares refinery. Uh, Argentina. No, you're too far away. I don't want to don't want to deal with you. Yeah, these air bases will, and the naval base, well, the air bases will get completed, or one of them each will get completed in March, so that's fine. Um, really need a lot more IC, but eh, we'll get there. All right, let's go, go full, full speed here. We've already gotten through three weeks. The uh, Chinese war is happening. You can actually see a uh, war with Republic of China and Zibi Sanma. Um, we're wasting IC in reinforcements. That's again, something we can certainly check and fix. We were kind of expecting that. Uruguay, no. Good. Glad, glad to see the reinforcements are getting taken care of here. Um, let's get that bumped up by one to get that in the green. Shanghai incident. This I'm used to as well. Um, I need to be careful though because normally I'd be like, oh yeah, we'll start clicking through because I'm so used to certain events popping in. I know what to expect. Brand new version. Things could have been tweaked. Um, but yeah, Shanghai must be protected. There's nothing we can really do about this. Okay. Specialist training active one. So all our, everybody's starting experience get, is at 10. Uh, combat, movement speed, uh, organization improvements as well. Okay. Uh, no, Brazil, no, Netherlands, no, even though I'm probably making, yeah, 25 bucks a turn here. It's hand over fist. Um, for rares, let's buy rares from Republic of China. It's not going to cost us a, uh, a, a convoy route. And that'll get us uh, closer to being green. We'll need to get a bit more somewhere else though. Yep. Deploy. Yep. Upgrade. Uh, we're taking artillery focus. So here's all of our shortages and surpluses. Zinc, we have a shortage, so metal supplies are affected. Tungsten, we have a surplus, or so rare materials are affected. Rubber shortage, that supply throughput's going to hurt us. It was that mobile movement speed. Uh, nickel, yeah, that's going to hurt us for the rare materials. Uh, molybdenum, blah, blah, yep. Yeah. Manganese, copper, we're at copper and chromite neutral right now. Because we have one of each. That would make sense. Okay. Aluminum shortage, not too carried away by that. Uh, Yugoslavia. Four money for 31 metal. Siam. They want energy. Okay. For half a buck. So we're making 15 bucks a turn. 
Yeah, let's spend four for 31 metal, and I guess that much closer to the green. I know that it will cause us to have to build yeah, a, a convoy, but it's only two required. Uh, single engine planes research budget high. Uh, upgrade mix supports. The 226 incident occurs, so we're up additional five descent. That's fine. Um, there's a couple of, well, in the past, there's a couple of events that occur that will lower the descent again, but we'll go ahead and take this. Um, interesting. Let's see the Imperial Army Organization. It almost acts like that's changed. I don't remember there being a one like that. And here's a second part of it. Yeah, okay. But yeah, we'll represent their size better. It's what I always do anyway. Um, now let's get our consumer goods evened out. I don't care that we're at five. We'll, we'll lose that, uh, that five points will go down here. Supplies, we're doing pretty good. At some point I'll be able to, actually, I can drop this down to 30 right now. 30-ish. Yeah, there we go. <sighs> Try to get around 50,000 supplies. Um also want to max out energy as well. I know we're selling energy. 1622. Yeah, but we'll get more down the road here. Amphibious armor, budget limitation, head up. Okay. We're, we're gaining nine. That's fine. Good. Automobile, automotive factory improvements there. Amphibious armor. Uh, yes. Uh, Turkey. They want us to buy rares. Um, which I could certainly do. We are gaining nine at this point. Support brick guides, yes, yes. Uh, Britain, what do you want? Money for rares. That would be all my money and then some. So, no, not right now. Interesting. Turkey is selling me rares, but I don't see where I have a convoy going to them. So, it must be over land, which would kind of make sense, I guess. Egypt, no, we don't need to buy fuel. Um, here, though, let's. After picking artillery for this one, the option mix, do you need to decide which type of artillery would be the main one for all your mix support brigades? Uh, pack artillery. We'll only receive a buck for 16 energy. Well, that's okay. It means we'll get our energy back and we're not going to be losing as much. Um, we're educating 50 new officers, so we're down 16,000 officers. That will take us a year to get up to 100%. At our current rate, nothing changes kind of type deal. Uh, Poland, no. All right. Well, yeah, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I want to get to March at least here. Um, let's, there we go. Just that. There we go. Where are we at with supplies? Let's get this. Let's just go up to 20. There we go. Uh, reinforcements now. Jesus. Uh, let's get that there.
oh, this happened because I said let's Im let's increase the size of our divisions. That's right. Uh, I am. Um, currently, we're making three bucks. Well, Denmark, no. Siam, two seventy four for two thirty six. Would like to do it actually, so let's do it. Greece, supplies for money, they would like supplies for money, supplies for money, supplies for money, supplies for money, supplies for money. Beautiful. This will make my coffers flush. United States, uh, they want fuel for money. Sure. Cuba, money for metal. No, you're too far away. Uh, Canada, Uruguay. Um, So we're attacking, we won. Pack artillery, yes, upgrade that. No one will receive 17 metal for two money. That sucks. Bummer. Uh, here, we need to adjust that back down to 15. And we're in March, I think I might, I'm gonna go ahead and save. We've been doing this for two hours here. I don't, I don't want that large of a uh, file to have to upload to YouTube. So let me go ahead and save at this point here. And we will pick this up next episode here, starting my Japanese campaign in version 12.0 of Black Ice for Hearts of Iron 3. Appreciate you guys watching. I will see you next time. Bye.